Hello everybody and welcome once again to Daniel Sun's Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode, I would actually like to start looking at these Thieves cards. I've never done Thieves cards before, but I think there's a few things I've discovered in the process of working on it. So let's get on and start with some of the first things that we need to do. So well, here we are. The first thing we need to do is to actually make a Steve Cards assembler. Now I've already made one of these, but you need these simple PCB boards. Uh, so you need about well, actually, you need a lot of these PCB boards. I've got quite a few already set up, and I'll show you those. Basically, you just put put that together, and then you make one of these things. And these things here are sort of add-ons to the carts that you can actually to the Steve Carts assembler. So you've got a battery upgrade, which gives it basically generates a little bit of power per minute. And then you've got an an upgrade power crystal, and you've got which is actually what I put on mine. That generates 150 power units per minute. Um, this this one here is basically reducing the time and at the, at the expense of increasing the cost, I think. Cost assembly time, efficiency. Oh, assembly efficiency is only 1% down. But these things are generally fairly expensive. Actually, because they're using reinforced metal and a blank upgrade. And the reinforced metal is made by smelting stabilized metal which is made by crafting these five stabilized metals so you need one of these hardened mesh and some refined hardeners which is made by raw heart cooking raw hardener which is basically one diamond and four obsidian will make two of those things so it becomes fairly expensive on your diamonds so you would need at least four of those things and i think if i'm not mistaken this thing also needs one. So this needs another four. So one of these hardened meshes requires two diamonds, basically. The iron itself isn't so important, and this one requires another four diamonds. So you need six diamonds to make five of these. You'll get one over, so I suppose in a way you'd get 11, 12 diamonds would make, no, less than that. 10 diamonds would make 10 of these, I guess. So it's fairly expensive on diamonds, anyway so that was that one so and the blank upgrade is two more of these things plus an advanced pcb and that's two simple pcbs redstone and iron it's not too ex not too bad that one so all of these upgrades here are basically for improving things here so this one so you've got a co10 co2 one which reduces the fuel cost by 15 percent uh, I, but mostly you, you cook things in them there, like this. And the other one that's really important is this one, the upgrade cart module. It allows you to basically modify carts, disassemble and modify carts. So let's have a look. Here I've got a cart. What you do is you come along here, you put it into your assembler, disassembler. You actually have to put it into this piece here like that. And then you can escape out of there and look into this. So you can then see what I've put in here. So I've got a standardised hole. I've got one compact solar en engine, one cleaning machine, and one top chest. And that basically allows me to cook this thing. And I'm not going to do it now because I've already done it. But the recipe for these things are also reasonably, exp actually only iron in this case. So it's basically two iron wheels and f five ingots. So the iron wing f it basically is just one iron and some sticks. That's not too bad at all. But it goes on. <laughs> I can tell you that for nothing. So let's go out of here. And that's just um, this one here, the compact solar engine. Let's have a look at the recipe for that one. So that's two advanced piece of PC boards, two advanced solar panels. And the recipe for those is just solar panels, which will make uh, like that. So that's just basically redstone and glowstone and a bit of iron. So it's not too expensive, this one. Especially if we've got a mod farm and it's producing a lot of stuff. Let's just take this out of here like that. Now the idea of this one, this cleaning module, is the one that I've been searching for forever. <laughs> oh yes, I've just noticed my, I have a slight mistake here, which I wanted to show you. That was from last episode. It's basically, I set it to be one block high and one block below, didn't I? Let's just um, check that, I have to fix that actually before we do anything else. So here I set up the custom area. So the height was shown just one. So we actually need to edit this custom area. So we shift right. 
Um, what did I do then? Let's, let's just make it. Yes, make it the custom area. That should work. So I've put the height up to, to higher. And as you can hear, it's breaking items already. You can't see it, but it's breaking items. Because I'd forgotten to actually include the height of this, this, the tree. And I think it's actually still too low for this particular tree. Anyway, back to this thing. So the cleaning module. I'm going to go over to the um, ocean base, and I shall see you there. All right, here I am. I put in a chunk loader here to keep the whole area loaded. There are actually no guardians spawning here at the moment, which is strange. But let's go down and put this cart down here. I actually created another one, as you can see here. This is just a wooden hold cart, so I'm going to remove this. I think I can remove it with a pickaxe and that cart with a hopper in it. So now we're going to put down the cleaning one, like that, and hopefully it won't run at the moment because it's night time. So we can put this down here, we can have a quick sleep, and then it should start off again. Oh, too bad, too far away. As you noticed, it's night time. In fact, there are, since, since I've been here, there's some mobs have spawned anyway. So this cart should then power up, and it should go around cleaning away the area. I'm not sure which way it's going to go. I hope it's going to go and I hope it's going to travel along. Oh yeah, there you go. Oops. There it goes. So it's now going to go around and pick up all of the um, squid drops that we've, or the ink sacs that have been dropped by the squids, and it should be a much bigger area than the one before. I haven't seen it yet. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll follow it this way. So we can see, because the mobs haven't been spawning, because I've not been here, there's one there. Now this wouldn't have got picked up by the other cup, but this time you saw it got picked up quite nicely. And this will just trundle along now. But what I haven't done, of course, is to set up the next bit. Here we go, there's one in the corner. That definitely wouldn't have been picked up with the hopper cart. But no problem this time. So that's something I'm, I'm quite impressed with. So let's go down here. Now, of course, this thing's going to have an inventory. If I click on it, you see it's picked up three ink sacks. But I stopped it. So now, to get those ink sacks out of here, we have to use the um, cargo manager, this thing here. So the recipe for the cargo manager is basically huge iron panes and large iron panes and large dynamic panes. So the recipe for this is four small iron panes which is made from small wooden there's rabbit's holes isn't it these chest panes which is basically two logs and um six two logs and seven planks will give 32 of these so these aren't too expensive uh and these aren't too expensive either you get eight for one and the uses of those is you can make the the large planes and the huge panes and you can make the small dynamic ones and I think you can probably make, if you look at the uses of that, you can make the larger dynamic panes. As you can see, they, they get, or a huge dynamic pane requires a simple PCB. So with that, we can make one of these cargo managers, like that. So what we can do is we can put the cargo, cargo manager down, um, anywhere we like, really. And what I'm going to do is I will actually think about this a second. Let's put it down here. Now what we need to do in front of this cargo manager is to put some track. I and mean, the track we need is the advanced detector rail. Now the advanced detector rail, let's have a look at the recipe for that, is actually not too bad for a change. <laughs> it's two iron plates, so it's two stone plates and six pieces of iron and one piece of redstone. So that gives you two of these advanced detector rails. So all we need to do in this case is to actually um, Turn that off again. Is to replace this. Here comes the cart. Now let's get it go. Let it go past. And there'll probably be one or two more. Now it's actually got only three, so hasn't there haven't been too many squids killing themselves while we've been here. But what you can do with this, there's some mod in in this pack that allows you to right click up something a uh, track onto another, and it replaces that track. So here we can have this. Not contact. Oh, I put the wrong one down, didn't I? I'll put down the distributor, which we'll have a look at next time. Uh, later, 
and this one. So now we've got this. So what we can do with this is that we'll actually import stuff from the um, from the from the uh, cart as it comes past. So this is the this is the blue face over here. So all we need to do is to select that. So anything on the blue face will get pulled in into this slot here, and it will stop the cart as it goes past, which means that we don't need to do anything clever, which is good. <laughs> here it comes. Now this time it should stop as it gets here and unload those um, ink sacks. So it's unloaded all the ink sacks and it carries on again. And then of course all we need to do is then take those ink sacks and feed them into here and that bit's done. So what I want to do next was to have a look at the uh, this, but we'll um, have a look at this external distributor, but we'll have a look at this on a new cargo manager. So I'm going to go back to the to the main base and I'll see you in a few seconds when I'm there. So now I've actually got to make another cargo manager. In fact it required basically one stack of the of these chest panes to make these bits and pieces and of course it needed about five pieces of uh, redstone so it's not too bad. So we should be able to make one of these quite quickly. So let's go and put this down here like that. And on top of it, let's put this external distributor. Now this is the thing that confused me first of all. Let's just have to shift right click it down on this like that. So when you come here, you'll see that this cargo manager's got two sides to it and different colours. So let's just set it up so that we put something into there. So I've got two hoppers here, let's just put one of the hoppers. It doesn't really matter where I put the hoppers. We'll put it on this red face over here like that. And then we'll put something in the hoppers. So let's just put in a bucket like that. So then we have to configure this thing. So we want to say we want to put that bucket into a cart for example. So you just click over here and you just put it into a cart and you want it on the red side. So that should now have come out of there and gone into the into here like that. But for example if I actually wanted that to go into the blue side it doesn't work. It always goes into the red side. So what you have to do is you have to click this button in the front then it splits it into four. So the first thing it's doing is splitting it in four and they're all black. So each side has its own slots. So this time, if I want this to go into the blue side, what we have to do is not do that at all. We'll get rid of this one. And then time we want to put it here. So we want it to go into the blue side, which is at the bottom right-hand side, I think. Was it right-hand side? Just double check it. No, top, up, the top right-hand side. So we just basically take a top right-hand side piece here and put it onto the red side. And then we can put that bucket into it there and it will then disappear out of here and come into this but of course there's another mode of this just to make life even more complicated you can click it again and then we get colors so in this case we've got different colors so we can determine what things go into which colors so for example if i'm taking everything out of here like say that and this is one of the only one that's going to the cart and then we put this in here so that we want something to go to the into the cart like this to the cart it in here and we drop something in where do you think it's going to end up I think it's going to end up here but it might also end up in the top right hand side let's just see what happens so it has ended up in the top right hand side so it used that one first um, so that's going from the cart like that Hold on, was that to the did I set that up to doing to the cart or from the cart to the cart so if you right click this one this time put that bucket in again <laughs> this is really got me I got really confused with this I'll be honest with you it should be on the bottom right hand side here because that's the only slot that's going to the cart when I was doing it setting it up at the back there it took me ages to figure out what I wanted it to do so really what you want it to do is you want you can set it to which one you want so the moment it's set to colors so I want it to go come in for here and go into the blue slot for example so what we do is we come along here get rid of that one we just drop blue on it I know it looks strange let's put the bucket in this time and of course it's going to end up in the blue slot here I'm actually not sure what happens if we change this and put in the green slot here as well put, put green slot in there so you get both so where is it going to go to this time it's probably going to go into both bits let's just get out of my builders bag here a stack of slime blocks like this 
and then put those into there. So they're going to come out in here and they're going to all come into here because it's the blue slot. If I actually come along here and remove the blue slot, then they'll all go into the green slot like that. So with it, not having realized this actually has to be split into four, it made life a little bit difficult. So now that's going through there and over here, I set this up. So this cart comes along here and hits this thing. So if I look here, so we've got from the cart is the red one. So the red face comes from the cart, which is this side here. So in here, the red face just doesn't do anything. Well, actually, goes to the it goes to the green face, doesn't it? So the green face is on this one over here. You can, can't see it there. You can see it. It should be here. So it goes to the green face. So anything from the cart gets pulled along here, and then it's going to hit. The next thing it's going to hit is this. So saplings are going to go on the south side, and sticks are going to go on the top, out the top. So sticks come out over here, and then they're going to go back down there. So in here I've got on the top side, which is the orange side, sticks go to the green side over here. So you have a look at sticks, they go into the engine like that. So they go in so they get filled to the car in the engine. So the other thing that was happening is the other it came out of this side, so saplings will come out of this side and come in here. Like that. You can just see that's actually the magenta side there. It's a bit tight. Let's have a look over here. It's happening to go to the south side, which is magenta. That comes out of here. They get pushed down here and into here. So the so the saplings coming from the um, blue side. Let's have a look. Goes to the blue side. So in here, the blue side is where the saplings go to, and that goes into the sapling slot on the cart. Well, so let's just take some sapling saplings. We've got plenty like this. Let's take some sticks. Like that. And then put those into a, into the cart manager on the red top red side. I can shift click them in to actually go that way. And you'll see that they've actually gone through there very fast. Let's put those in there, press escape. They should we should see those coming through here like that. And they're ending up in the sapling bit, as you can see. It's a bit slower that one, don't see why, but it was. And this has just taken some blocks with it. I'm not quite sure what it was doing, but there we are. Now here we've got another mechanism. So these are solar panel carts. I don't want them travelling at night, especially under trees. If they travel under trees at night, they basically will stop because they run out of power. And then you've got to give them fuel. So in here I've got a, a wood cutter, a solar engine and a coal engine. And the coal engine is on low priority in the... Um, solar engines on high priority. The reason I don't want it to use the coal engine is because these carts produce pollution and they produce quite a lot of pollution. So here I've got a, day, a daylight sensor as you can see and it's got power 11 coming out of this and the daylight sensor when you right click it becomes a night a night sensor so it'll emit a, a redstone signal when it's night time unlike a day unlike a daylight sensor which you'd expect to only emit signals during the day doesn't work that way. So let's go and get um let's make another daylight sensor. I think I need three. So actually I've got plenty of daylight sensors, but we'll make another one. Well I'm missing three sets of planks with the one we've got. So we just need some wood. Planks like that, so we'll make the daylight sense. So we should, should have got enough for that now. Like this. And then we'll put this down. Doesn't matter where I put it down. You can't see anything coming out of it, so we just have to put one piece of redstone down here like that. And you'll see that that's it, she's got no, no signal at all. Why has this got power of 11? Actually, that's not working as I expected it to work, to be honest with you. Where's it gone to? Let's pick it up again. Let's go and put those together. So if I put this one down here, 
actually I'll have to put it somewhere a bit, little bit further away, won't I? So that we can actually see the redstone coming through there like that. So this one's actually got no power. If I right click it, it's got power. If I right click it again, it's gone off. But it doesn't go off just at night. So what I wanted this is to basically this has got underneath this cart we've got a an advanced um let's have a look, move it out a bit. An advanced rail detector. So when that advanced rail detector has got no signal. So it's busy now, it's just picking up bits and pieces as it as we gave it some saplings to. It stops here, so it's now got the saplings. And it picked up a stick, I think. It had one space slot free. So there we have 18 saplings and they're ready to plant but it doesn't work with these type of saplings of course because they as we discovered last time they don't work with uh, Steve Cart's tree, tree farms. So this has not got any this hasn't got a signal in until it's morning. So if we now wait till morning and have a quick sleep. Do it somewhere I can actually lie down of course. It'll set off as soon as that starts to become day. So this has now got a power of seven, as opposed uh, as opposed to a power of one. Just wondering what was happening there. But it's got stuck for some reason. Why has it got stuck? <laughs> What's it doing? <laughs> Somehow it was doing something strange with those saplings. It's used all the saplings. What's it done with the saplings? I don't know what it's done with those saplings. It hasn't put them back in here. Did it just consume those saplings? Most peculiar. Anyway, that's that's this car. This car is relatively straightforward to, to build. Let's go and grab it as it comes past here. Like that. Did I break? No, I didn't break a rail. Go over, now, over here and have a look at the. Put it in here. Actually, you have to put you have to put it in this slot here to actually make sure it works. Modular cars like this. And then you can see it. So basically, you've got two engines in here. One basic wood cutter. One cleaning module to pick up the um, saplings or anything that were dropped from the trees that shouldn't have been dropped. And some storage. So I've got some internal storage and I've got some top storage. Now the top storage is compatible with these solar panels. Um, if you use the, the other type of solar panel it doesn't work. So let's go and have a look at that. Let's go and have a look at that one. But I might have even got it built one to be honest with you. It's lightning. <laughs> I think it's charging up the yeah, thing. So, um, so the solar panel, which one was I looking at? So I've got all sorts of things built in here ready for testing purposes as it were so we've got some large rollers and some bridge builders and stuff like that which I'm wanting to do next time um, if I can understand it that is so we've got tech to manager um, what am I thinking of oh yes this one the basic solar engine I think is the small variety of that and then you've got the solar engine here so the, yes that's right modular cost of 12 and this one's got 20 if you press shift so this one will occupy the center and top sides so you can't use that one with the um what's the look at what we got in here this will use the front side this will use the left and right hand side this will use the this will occupy the top side so if you've got a top chest you can't have a one of those solar engines in here like that You'll notice I've got no pa no coal in here because I've got I've added more fuel of using these items here. So I'm basically using one of these upgrade crystal and the solar panel. So the solar panel will get the power from the sky and this one just gets it from nowhere. Like that. So we can take this cart out again. I'm not going to use this cart again, I don't think, except for maybe to do something else with that particular one because the tree farm, it worked quite nicely for ordinary trees. So I did some trees over here uh, some saplings I think I use birch yeah I use birch because I got 1100 um, pieces of wood which I didn't have before well that's it for this episode 
I think I've covered the basics of getting Steve carts to work. Next time we're going to assemble a regular and maybe a bridge building. We'll set this thing going off towards the jungle base. That's the goal. So until then, bye for now.